What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Becoming a Local Leader. My name is Grant Felicieris, co-founder and CEO of Park Bench and creator of the Local Leader Real Estate Marketing System. And I'm here with Arnold Hickey, who is a local leader and local realtor in Phoenix, Arizona, specifically in the North Avondale area um, and the surrounding areas. So thank you, Arnold, for being on the show. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity, Grant. Looking forward to it. So why don't you give everyone listening kind of a quick overview of who you are, how long you've been in the business, um, and, uh, and, and about your business. You know, are you solo with a team, like the scale of it? Give some people some background on who you are. Sure. Um, I've uh, been in the business for 20 years. Uh, formerly, uh, um, first 10 years was up in Edmonton, Canada. And in, a Canadian, yeah, all right. I'm a Canadian, yeah. So 2009, I come down here to get out of the cold, down into the Phoenix area, fell in love <laughs> with the place, and I'm still here. So uh, I've been 10 years in Canada, 10 years in Phoenix. And um, so through the years, uh, my last 10 years here, I've done some uh, just running solo. Uh, I've done uh, some commercial and residential for a number of years. Uh, mm -hmm. Had to step back uh, in 2000, let me see, it was... Uh, yeah, it was early 2018. I had some health issues come my way, and uh, I was just referring out all of my business for the balance of that year and uh, um, did a lot of recovering and a couple other little issues this year, but uh, everything is all recovered. So I'm getting, I guess my point in saying that is I'm getting back into the real estate business again mm. since uh, probably last May. Uh, so it's uh, here I am standing here. And I said, I, I've got 20 years experience. I should know this by now. It should be easy <laughs> for me, but it's not. It's difficult. So, um, so I'm really just uh, getting back in and getting my feet wet over the last six months. So, Give people some, um, and I love hearing these stories, and, and congratulations for, for getting back into it, because some people fall off the map of the in, in the industry as a yep. whole. Like a lot of people, most people, um, end up you know, leaving uh, within five, 10 years. Right. So walk people through like how your, has your business evolved over time? So when you first got started over the 20 years, then you paused and, and give people some um, background on how it's evolved, how many transactions you've gone up and down with and, and volume and stuff yeah. like that. Sure. Um, when I first started in the business back in 2000, it was, um, I, I hit the ground running. I was running hard. Um, I uh, um, did a lot of, a lot of cold calling cold calling I think was a lot easier and better back in that day than it is today. And um, I, I chased a lot of business. I did 38 transactions my first year, 70 the second year and hundred the third year. So I was, I was slamming hard. Um, Holy. Yeah. My second year though, I want to point out is that I was um, approaching 70 transactions. And at that point I loved the business but I didn't like all of the time I was running solo and it was difficult. And I said, you know what? I love the business. I love the people. I love the income, but I'm not working this many hours. So I'm going to, I'm going to get out of the industry and I'm going to go work at something else. And I uh, uh, went to a conference and, and I was approached by a coach, a personal coach. And uh, I was telling him my story and he said, Arnold, give me one year with you. And I promise you, he said, you'll get that all ironed out. And I said, I can't see how I can do any more. I already tracked all my numbers. I knew my efficiency models um, and everything. And, and I, the only way I can do more is I have to work more hours. And mm. he said, give me one year. So I said, all right, you've got it. The next year I did a hundred transactions and I averaged 38 hours a week was my work. Wow. So I had a lot of systems in place. And uh, so then I got into the brokerage business and uh, Upstart uh, ran a brokerage, uh, ran that for five years and spun it back off. And uh, a few years, a couple years later, come down into Arizona. So in Arizona, I've been uh, working um, uh, kind of off and on, did some uh, in early days here. I bought a lot of fix and flips back in 2010 and 11. Uh, doing some things like that. But now, um, in the last year now, I've just been really focused on just getting back into the real estate business and trying to generate that, that uh, positive cash flow income like I used to have. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so walk me through, what, what are, I mean, before we get into the park bench, um, yeah. when you think about numbers and efficiencies uh, and systems, what are some of the key numbers you find agents don't track that they need to track 
what do you think are some of the big inefficiencies in agents' businesses that they need to work on and some of the systems that really help agents um, produce? Yeah, that's a, that's a good, really good point. What I find is a lot of agents get up in the morning and they just let the day happen. Uh, they say, oh, well, I should do some interviews, so I book some interviews, or, or I have to make some calls. Or they, they don't proactively book their times, and that's mm -hmm. what I would do. Is I, would, I would have a plan Sunday night, this is what I'm going to achieve this week. And I would lay that plan out, and uh, then I would track my numbers. I know that I wanted to uh, make this many contacts every single day. And um, so I would make sure that I made those contacts. So I want to know how many contacts I made based on connection to how many appointments I would go on, how many appointments do I uh, actually, uh, um, actually get to go on because some of them cancel, appointments to listings, listings to sales. And I knew all of my numbers. And in knowing those numbers, I found I was just able to write my paycheck. Um, and I ran that stuff very, very well. Um, I figured all that out in my second year in the real estate business. And uh, I said in uh, February that year, I was coming from a conference and I, I was on fire. I seen the big picture and I said, I can make a quarter of a million dollars this year. Now you got to know this is back in 2001, my average sale yeah. price was 140,000. And it's a lot of transactions uh, to do that. A man. lot of transactions. And, uh, but I knew what I had to do every single day to hit that goal at the end of the year. So a very proactive approach uh, is definitely what I like to follow and what I did back then for sure. So now with all the experience you've had, you've probably done lots of things to build your brand, build your database, get the deal flow coming in. Um, you mentioned cold calling. Uh, a couple of questions. What have you done to grow your business? What do you find has not worked? And what do you find uh, has worked in the past? In the, in the past, like I said, when I started, I, I, I really started the business on calling expired listings. Uh, back in that day on the MLS system, you had the seller's phone number on there. I would just sit down and I would just start dialing and I would keep dialing until I got an appointment. And I would do that every day. I would want to get a couple of appointments booked a day. Um, so that worked very well for me. Now we spin the clock ahead 18, 19 years. And um, this year, I've tried to work that expired system. I thought I had great success at it before. I can do it again. I did it so much. I still had the dialogues in my head. I could repeat them at any time. And uh, I was calling. It is a very different animal out there now with expired mm -hmm. listings. Um, do not call and things like that. And, and I find that people just don't want to be bothered. You're trying to make those calls and and they're yelling at you on the phone, they're hanging up on you, uh, all of those kinds of things. So I found it a lot more difficult today. So the other thing that I have been doing is trying to go to network meetings, try and build my center of influence because I'm still relatively new in this country and, and mm -hmm. new at trying to run the business here and, and trying to build relationships, build that center of influence. And uh, it's been it's been a really difficult it just hasn't been coming together for me the way that i really want to see it yeah. walk me through um before you joined park bench so you talked about some of the challenge and you kind of mentioned it like cold calling doesn't work so much anymore door knocking doesn't work so much anymore networking is getting harder maybe or not as fun anymore mm -hmm. what are some of the problems and the challenges you know that you're facing your business that made when you saw park bench made you want to give it a go in the in the past like i said let me back up a little bit when i when i first started my first three years was was a lot of cold calling i really built my business on that but after i had done that um, i ended up with a really good center of influence we had a good database and for the next number of years all of my business came from repeat and referral so that's really what I've been trying to get mm. going back on here again is getting that uh, repeat and referral business going and uh, going to the networking events. Um, they're okay, but it's hard to really make connections with the people and uh, even following up with them after. And, uh, why, do you, going, why do you think that? Why do you think it's, it's difficult? I mean, I've experienced this myself, but what, what's sure. your perspective on why it's difficult to be building good connections at these events? Um, and couple of reasons. So one thing is the quality of networking events you go to and the quality of people that are there. Um, that makes the big difference. Um, sometimes you find yourself at a networking event, not to put anybody down, but I mean, 
they they can't they can't afford to buy a house anyway. Uh, they can barely afford to do the rent. Yeah. So those are not mm -hmm. good networking functions. So then I go to some others, and um, they're uh, uh, I found it difficult to make some connections with them. Now part of that I'll put on I have to put on my own shoulders because it's my own insecurity. Um, you know, so I'm at a networking event with a lot of, let's say, executives, and maybe it's a good quality networking event, but I'm just a little reserved and not willing to just step out and make the connections with them uh, long term. And the, and the follow up connection after as well. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, and I, like I say, I, a lot of it was probably put on myself rather than, uh, than the events themselves. So, yeah. Well, I, pre I mean, I appreciate that because. How many other agents you think feel the exact same way that exactly. they have, they, you know, they have their own, you know, fears, doubts, worries, insecurities, like we're humans. Yeah. And so as much as these things exist, it's like if, if, if a person isn't comfortable, then it's not going to be the path of least resistance to growing, you know, a business Correct. in the sphere of influence. Okay. Correct. So how'd you find out about Park Bench and, and what was your first per, uh, perception when you heard about it and, and got the demo? That's an interesting question. I was just thinking when you were asking that too. Like I found out about it. I've seen it on Facebook. Now, if anybody that's anybody that's around Facebook today, we are inundated by everybody that's got the latest and greatest and and uh, coaching system and strategies and sign up here and take this. And uh, uh, I've over the years I've fell victim to a couple of those. Uh, I'll admit to that. But when I come across uh, park bench and I just took a look at it um, I thought you know what I think this thing might be valid I think there just might be something here I can sink my teeth into because it's going back to my grassroots a referral based business um, I'm not a big marketer uh, I, I, I've tried those things they are extremely expensive I've had people work for me that that gosh they'll spend anywhere between three to five to ten thousand dollars a month on marketing and yeah they can get a lot of business but I mean, what is their net at the end of the day? How much are they keeping in the bank? It's the big thing. And I, yeah. uh, I like to uh, do this more on referral, repeat and referral and build connections. Uh, I've been a strong business background before I get into real estate. Mm -hmm. and I've mm -hmm. always believed in you build relationships first and do business second. And uh, that's, yeah, what I, and, what I and you've in. seen, and you've been in the industry long enough to see the ups and downs of the economy. Um, what have you found the realtors who survive and still thrive in a downturn versus the ones who don't the differences in their business between their brand and their database and how they run it and how they do it because i've seen that people yeah. who have a bigger brand who have a bigger database who have built it on relationships and referrals are the ones who can survive and thrive during those times versus the ones who are too heavy on advertising uh, don't. What, what's your findings? hundred percent, hundred percent. Because you just it, like it, after a while, I mean, if you're doing, if you're spending $3,000 a month today, and let's say the Phoenix market is very good market, very strong market. Mm -hmm. And if you're spending three grand a month and if the market, you know, goes in the tank, you've got to increase that to nine or 10 to get the same result. Mm -hmm. um, with with my business, I just have to continue to grow my database is all I need to do and then reach out to more people and that really doesn't cost anything. Um, now, in your, now in your market as well, not only um, Phoenix for anyone who doesn't know is a pilot market for the iBuyers or has been for the iBuyers and for Redfin. Yes. So yes. you experience some different things than other people um, who don't have those so prevalent when you think about these tech companies, these iBuyers coming in the marketplace, what is your philosophy of, if I do this, I won't do well with them coming in the market. If I do that, if I do this strategy, I will survive and thrive despite what they're doing. Yeah, and that's a really good point. And some people are afraid of the iBuyers, just like back in the late 90s and 2000s, everybody was scared of the internet and uh, that's gonna replace the realtor, it never has. Um, the iBuyer, the first thing I realized about the iBuyer is they are a net gain company. Okay, they are for profit. So they can't list the house for $400,000 the same as I can and, and, not, and they're, they're just not going to make any money because they can't sell it for four fifty dollars and make their money. I'll give you a prime example. Uh, I just sold my house. Um, just, it closes in a couple of weeks. 
I called an I buyer just for the hell of it. What are you going to mm-hmm. give me for my house? Mm-hmm. Um, I put all my information on there. Um, I put my house on the market for half a million dollars and within 24 hours, I had a full price offer. And an I buyer offered me, I was going to net 401,000. Hundred thousand dollars wow. difference. Now in mine, you take the brokerage fees off of that at thirty thousand. You're still netting four seventy out of this with the I buyer. It's four hundred, and that's what I say to all of my clients. You can go and check out the I buyer, and um, here's what you're going to find. And if you mm-hmm. don't have time, if you want the convenience, and and you're not a net seller, you don't want to net the most amount of money you can. Maybe that is the route to go. And I don't want to put them down because there is mm-hmm. a there is a spot for them. But uh, um, here's here's what I can do for you. And you just stand on your own strength, and yeah. it never comes up again. Never. Comes I remember. Up. I remember. I did the the math, and same thing with for sale by owner. And say, the average homes for sale by owner sells for one hundred ninety four thousand. Average home with a realtor is two hundred thirty four, two hundred fifty four. And it's like at that price point, you know, it doesn't kind of seem like that big of a difference, but that's thirty four percent. You know, mm-hmm. and it's like, and you you now work up in the higher price points, like thirty four percent. Why not pay an agent six five six percent? Um, to get an extra 20, 25%. Yeah. Yeah. Um, exactly. so agreed. All right. Now let's, let's, um, give people a perspective, um, your thoughts on, okay. So park bench comes along and, and the pitch is, all right, you're going to be the ambassador of this local website and you're going to go out there and you're going to interview business owners and professionals and people in the community and feature them on the website. And that's going to be a great way to grow your brand and grow your business. And some realtors think, what? Like, shouldn't I be talking to homeowners? Like, shouldn't yeah. I be? So, so why didn't you get people, um, your thoughts on what, what was going through your head when you saw this concept? When I initially saw the concept, it was that um, all of those business owners live in houses. They all own houses. Mm-hmm. Uh, all of their staff own and live in houses. So I can make one stop and probably uh, make a connection with 10 people in that company so that's like knocking on 10 doors the Mm -hmm. other it's not like let me back up that's not like knocking on 10 doors i go out and knock on 10 doors um, (laughs) i either won't get the door open or i'll get nine slammed in my face yeah because i have no relationship with them when i go and approach the business owner uh, i have something of value and it's all about them it's not about me and Mm -hmm. it's how i can add value to them and uh, that's what I see as a tremendous difference. I'm not sure if that answered your question. Or no, not. no. So um, one of the things that I enjoyed when I did this was but. the efficiency of this. Because one, oh, yeah. uh, when I did my pitch, my success, my rejection rate was a whole lot different than when I was cold calling, door knocking, or sending out advertising. Yeah. Then not only was the the success rate of building connections and talking to people really high, but um, I was able to book interviews and book meetings with people outside of client time. So mm-hmm. I had complete control over my calendar, which mm-hmm. for me, my mentor used to always tell me, Grant, you control your calendar, you control your income. Absolutely. And and when you advertise, sometimes you get leads, you know, at the wrong time, and you can't respond to it right away because you're busy doing something else. Um, so what, talk to me about now that you've gotten started and you've done this and you're a, a numbers efficiency person, w- when you think about the efficiency of this, the pleasantness of this, the results of this, um, what are some of the things that, that are at the top of your mind? Well, and I mean, you hit the nail on the head. It's like I, I control my calendar and um, I don't have to run to everybody at the second exact moment that they want to uh, talk to me. What I love about this as well, I went to a Chamber of Commerce networking function yesterday. Um, sat with a table of just five people right where I was, but there was multiple tables throughout the, uh, the room. Uh, I had a business card from all five people. And when I got back to my office, first thing I did was emailed all five people. And um, they already knew what I did. We talked about it. And then they, I had them, I invited them formally then to, for an interview. All five had said, thank you very much. And uh, they all want to be interviewed. So now I can take those and plug them into my calendar next week. I don't have to do it this week. I don't have to do it tomorrow. 
Uh, a couple of them I am because I had some open schedules mm -hmm. there, but, I, but I'm able to control my time and control what I'm doing. And I know what's coming up next week. I already have some other activities time blocked so they don't get in there. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I'm booking interviews now into Thursday and Friday next week. And it's, mm -hmm. it's easy to do that. And there, it's not an urgent thing where it needs to be done today. You built the relationship mm -hmm. and they, I think you're better off to, there's nothing wrong with booking it three or four or five days out because that shows yeah. you are busy, you are a professional and you do have business on the go. Now so. I tell, I, I tell agents, the other one is you fill your calendar up with meetings, you're going to fill your bank account up with money. Um, that's, that's the basics of, of, of real estate. Now that's some it. agents, when they say, yeah, but, but this isn't a listing presentation. Like when I heard that, when I heard that phrase, I think of just filling my calendar up with listing presentations, buyer consults. So what is your uh, feeling around these kinds of meetings and why it is very similar to and just as beneficial, maybe more beneficial than, um, you know, a listing presentation or buyer consult? Like, how do you relate these meetings to, to those? Um, I'm, I believe the listing presentations and the buyer consults will all come um, without a doubt. This here is, a, is an opportunity to build a relationship and it's, and it's a solid relationship. I can meet with these business owners for 30 minutes and, and uh, they know, like, and respect me as if I'd have known them for years. We have never done any business together yet, but they're already telling me that I will be top of mind and they will be referring me. Um, so the business or the um, listing presentations, buyer consoles, I believe they're all going to come. I'm very patient on that. And, uh, and they are coming, they are coming. Mm -hmm. I spoke with, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I, I followed up with uh, my very first interview uh, that I did a few weeks ago. I followed up with her this week and she said, if I come across anybody that's got a buy or sell, she said, you're the first to, uh, to know. In fact, I have my best friend is gonna be selling. And she said, as soon as she tells me she's ready, she says, you're gonna get the call. And uh, awesome. so, I mean, it, it's, it's working, it's there, it's the relationships and you are going to get it. But I always said uh, for years in, in the real estate business, you have to earn the right to get that. Mm. I can't go and do an interview one time, six months from now, never talk to them again and expect that I'm going to be top of mind. You have to yeah. own a piece of their brain and you have to stay in touch with them. Yeah. yeah. And I love that, that word. Cause that's what I always tell people. I said, listen, you don't want to get leads and get business. You want to earn, earn the lead, yeah. earn the referral, earn the client. Because if a person, if you squeeze a deal out of a person, you yeah. might only get one, but if you earn it, that thing can happen over and over and over again. If a person genuinely wants to refer you business, they're a referral generator versus you squeezing maybe one out of them you're absolutely right grant and before we move off of that is is one there's there's two ways we can do this business we can go out and chase transactions cold call door, door knock i'm the next deal that is chasing transactions or we can build a business and a business is a book of relationships of people that we will refer to us they know like and trust us and we know like and trust them and they will refer us business time and time and time again. That is building a business and a sustainable business. I love it. Now, why don't you give people an overview <laughs> of when you think about here's the results that I've got um, from doing this thus far. You've, how long have you been with Park Bench? What are all the results, not just the leads and the clients and referrals, but all the things that you think about are positive results you've got from this. Um, and then we'll start uh, digging into your process. Um, I like the, uh, I'm not sure if this is, but the main thing that I like is the relationships I'm able to build. Remember I said before I would go to those networking functions and I'd be insecure. Um, I don't know if they're even gonna like me. I don't know if they would do business with me. I don't even know if I can even make a connection with them. All that stuff was going through my mind. I don't have that stuff going through my mind here today. I'm going in there, I'm focused on them and we're gonna, I have something of value to add to. You invited me to come here. Mm -hmm. uh, to be with you. It's, it's an entirely yeah. different mindset, different process completely. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, all right. So you've, you've, you've gotten great results <laughs> from this. And I tell agents that you've got to believe that this will work before you see it work. Because the way you come off when you're meeting the person, if you don't think that you're going to build a great relationship with that person, that person will then want to use you and refer you, yeah. then it's not going to happen. Um, was that belief when you 
right away, like 10 out of 10, you believe that this was going to work when you got started? Or was there maybe an evolution of the, the belief um, over time? I thought at the beginning, uh, initially when I signed on, I, I believed it would work. Yeah. Um, two days later, different story. I was like, oh, what did I do? Is this really going to work? Is this just something else I signed up for? Oh my gosh. But I put the money down. I've got to make it work. And not only that, my wife hasn't seen the credit card yet. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I said, uh, I've got to, I've got to go out and make connections and I need to figure out how to do that. I dug into your systems and yeah. got the scripts and, uh, and started working the system. But I'll also say, I've, yes, I've had some good success from it. Um, last week, um, I completed off a bunch of interviews. I got busy with some other things and I, hadn't, uh, I didn't have any new interviews in front of me. I started off this week again, um, thinking to myself, ah, well, I've had some not bad success. Um, I don't really know if I'm really, is this really gonna work the way I think it will? And, should I put more into it or should I maybe just go out and do some door knocking or do something? I mean, that negative thought was in my head this week. And then mm -hmm. I quickly slapped myself and said, no, get back on the horse, do the same things. And within one day, I've got the great success again and the belief that, and it yeah. all come, you're right. And, and if you believe it, it'll work, it will. And if you believe it won't, it won't. And yeah. I keep and maintain that belief system that this is going to work but I have to follow it up with the action. I put yeah. the action steps in place and then I get everybody calling me up saying, yes, I want, thank you very much. They're so appreciative that I would think of them and take the time to spend with them. And then, uh, I mean, it, it just gets rid of it all and then you have the positive attitude again. So it's something that uh, even though you have great success, it's still, you, you still have to you do gotta it. You gotta remind yourself, you gotta work on it. You gotta yep. keep, yeah, understanding why you're doing it and why it's working yeah. and um, compare it. No, totally. Now, you said something that I wanna get into a little bit. What did your spouse think about this when she did find out that you were doing this? Um, because that's sometimes <laughs> uh, a, a challenge is as an agent wants to do this and their spouse is, wondering like this is weird this is different um and they're unsure about the investment of time and money in doing this um and some agents are like well if they don't say yes then I, then I can't do this or i can't convince them you know and and some people some spouses get it right away some don't some need convincing so uh, what, what did your spouse think of this uh when she first learned that you were going to do this <laughs> um she's i could say she's seen it when it went through on a credit card and she said what is this <laughs> we, what are you doing now and uh, -huh. uh i said this is what it is but of course she don't see the big picture which i had to give her that grace i mean mm -hmm. i went through a demo with park bench she didn't go through a demo with mm -hmm. park bench mm -hmm. she didn't understand any of that if if she had it she would have uh, had the same belief said i know this will work uh we're moving to the west side of town I don't know anybody. This is a great opportunity to get in front of people and build relationships. And just trust me, there's going to be a lot of hard work going to this and this is going to pay off. And she uh, reluctantly, she's cautiously optimistic, but she's like, okay, go do it. And uh, that was, that was kind what of, is, what does she think about it now? What does she think about it now? Uh, she sees the hard work. I shouldn't say really hard, but she sees the work that's going in it. She sees the excitement that I have and um and everything and and she believes that the success is going to come she's she's mentioned that two or three times it is going to pay off it is going to pay yeah. off and uh so she's she's seeing that most importantly i think what gives her the reassur reassurance is the work that i'm putting into it and how my energy level has changed and mm -hmm. uh and i have something that i believe in so that gives her a lot of comfort that that's something, uh, let's go into that a little bit, because that's actually been a recurring theme of some agents, because we have a lot of agents who, um, you know, 45 to 65, um, they've been in the business for a while, and they talk about how this has reinvigorated them, this has energized them, it's given them new meaning, new purpose, it's more fulfilling, because again, they're not just chasing the transaction anymore. Um, yeah. talk, to, talk to me about um, that, and give some perspective to other agents, and, and let them know that, you know, the newer agents, hey, if you don't do this or focus on this this will happen to you in your career and hey if you're going through this uh feeling and thought right now in your business um this is why you know park bench might be the thing yeah um i'm 
in a few days, I'm 60 years old. And here I am reinventing myself in this real estate career and trying to get it going. And uh, um, it's, it gives me the belief and the energy that I need to keep it going. My wife says the same thing. She said she has not seen me this excited about something in, in two or three years. She said, you're, mm. she said you, you've got your excitement level back and, and you have a goal and you have something to run for. And, um, and it's, it's, and it's easy. It's not hard work. It's, uh, just, uh, make the calls, send the emails, book the appointments, yeah. go sit down and do the interviews. And, uh, now some, now some agents, they look at this and go, well, this looks really hard. Um, what maybe empathy do we have for where they're coming from and, and how do, how does park bench make it easy? Cause I know that that was a big thing that I, that I underestimated <clears throat> early on. Cause we've been doing this for seven years now. Um, how, how does, how do we make it really easy and why is it easy? Um, you, you, you're right. When, when I first looked at it, uh, and I've said this on the Facebook before that I was so overwhelmed in this whole process. I mean, this system is all there, but try and put it all together. I was extremely overwhelmed and I just, uh, um, working with Jesse and I said, look, at, I'm just going to do one thing. And that is, I'm going to book my first interview. I'm not even going to think about everything else. So we pieced it out. And um, so I got my first appointment. I went and did the interview. I've got it on my phone. Now what am I going to do? I don't even know what to do with that. I don't know how to get it into YouTube. I don't know anything about YouTube. I am not a tech person. I know nothing about anything on that kind of stuff. Uh, but we took it one step at a time. And uh, having the support uh, behind me, be able to do it made it really easy. The first, I think my first video probably took me five hours to process. Uh, I did two interviews yesterday and in inside of 30 minutes, they were all up on park bench. So, I mean, it, and, and the support and the systems that park bench has is, is really, it's always fascinating to me right from the very beginning. You're there. Uh, I was having a technology, a software issue with my own software. And I, emailed Jesse and I said, here's the problem I'm having and it's not your system, it's me. Have you got any suggestions? He says, call Darren. Here's his number. I called Darren. He answered <laughs> the phone. He answered the phone and then he walked me through it and it's done and I'm back in business again. And, yeah. you know, I mean, the support that Park Bench gives, in my opinion, of being around other types of companies like yours for 20 years is really unprecedented, Brad. Really, I love it. I love hearing yeah. that. And, and our CS team, like they're rock solid. Jesse yeah. gets lots of props. Darren has been with us for many years. And so yeah. he just has seen it all and is so able to quickly just help realtors uh, yeah. get over all these little, little things, but these little yeah. things add up. And it, uh, this has happened many times where the agent gets started and it does take a long time to do the first few because they're getting used to video and YouTube and, and this whole process. And sometimes it takes them out of the game. Their mind is like, oh yeah. my God, I'm so deflated. Yeah. What, what made you get through that um, so that you can then, because I just say a practice, like of course you're gonna suck at the beginning. Like yeah. you suck at everything when you first get started. Sure. Um, what, what was the mindset, what was the thought process that allowed you to get through that so that you now went from five hours to now it's like half an hour to get it done, sounds like. And it and that happened very quickly. Um, at first, I just wanted to send you the video and say, "Here, put it up for me," but uh, that didn't work. <laughs> um, but uh, um, the thought process was it, it was I had to break it down into one step at a time. Don't look at what I need to do at step nine. I got to look at step two. I've done the interview; it's on my phone. How do I get it off of my phone and onto my computer? That that's how green it was. I didn't even know how to do that. So um, Jesse sent me a, a, a clip that says, here's how you do that. Okay, great. So I got it into there. Um, there's a lot of editing um, programs out there. I looked at a few of them. I chose uh, Flipora 9. Uh, if I fl Fillmore 9, I think it Fillmore, is. Fillmore. Fillmore, yeah. yeah. See, so um, we don't even need to know the name of the program. I don't know the name of the program. I use it every day. <laughs> and uh, so I got it in there. I had to get another YouTube clip out and learn how to use that, but I still didn't think about how I need to get it into YouTube yet. Mm -hmm. I'm in the editing process. Mm -hmm. So I, I, the big thing, Grant, is I broke it down and said, here's what I need to do right now. This is a task in front of mm -hmm. me. That's all I'm going to focus on. 
and mm -hmm. I blocked that time out and I, and I figured that out. And then I got on to the next steps and so on and so on. Now in this new tech centric world, um, there's a lot of agents who are not tech savvy, who, you know, um, been doing it for a long time and now they're learning this. And I know that some of the intangible benefits of the exercise of doing park bench is helping people develop the skills that they're going to need if they're helping someone buy and sell a home. Cause you yeah. have to understand how to do video and how to use technology. Um, yeah. is there any like intangible, uh, benefits that you've you realized, you know, in this, the exercise of doing this that you've really appreciated, whether yeah. increased knowledge or skill in certain things that, you know, yeah, I mean, your career. certainly gave me some belief that I can figure this stuff out. Um, but also I'm looking at, okay, if I'm going to do a video on a home, um, I can easily edit it uh, through the program and I can get it on YouTube. I can get that uh, posted on the websites and everything where it needs to go. Um, I mean, it, you're absolutely right, Grant. I mean, because I've learned this um, process, I can use it in a host of different areas. I had a good friend of mine that's uh, in a different business that's unrelated and wouldn't be uh, um, anything to support me, but I can still said to him, hey, if you want to make a video about your business, I've got this cool editing program, let's do it, and I can put it up there, and you can have your YouTube clip. And he's, oh, yeah, great. You know, so uh, there's just other things you can do to have fun with it. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Now let's, let's um, get into the nuts and bolts of, of your process. How do you book an interview? Um, or what are the, all the ways maybe you do it? Maybe you do lots of different ways. How long does it take? Um, I, book, I book all of my interviews just through an email. Uh, I don't pick up the call, phone and call them, um, which is opposite to what I'm used to doing. Like I said, I did a lot of cold calling. And I thought I would have to call a lot of business owners and get appointments booked. I find it is, works really well. Just sending them an email, two-liner is all it is. Uh, subject line is feature your company. And I just say, hello, Grant. Uh, I'm curious if you would like to feature your home, and, or not your home, your business, in this new website that I've sponsored, parkbranch.com slash North Avondale. And um, it's totally free for you. Business owners are getting a... Uh, amazing results from it period that's it and the emails the responses just keep flooding back in so I just book the appointments go and meet them um, I've been as long as because we got chatty about an hour uh, mm -hmm. but uh, yesterday I did one showed up at his business they're they're under construction there was saws and music and hammers and air guns and every air compressors everything going in there like I can't do this in here. I, <laughs> Come on, let's go outside. Go outside. I plopped the tripod down on the hood of my car and we stood there, traffic going behind us. No distraction. I don't believe the video still come off great. Uh, but yeah. that one I was in and out of there in wasn't even 15 minutes, 10, 15 mm -hmm. minutes. And it was mm -hmm. bing, bang, boom, we're in, we're out, we're done. So I like to um, get to know them a little bit first, have a chat with them. Um, and here's our process. They, I learn a little bit about them, build a little relationship, maybe five to seven minutes. It doesn't take a long time. So then here's the questions. They've already had those ahead of time, which uh, mm -hmm. I got from you guys. Uh, these are the questions that I ask. And um, so they already know those. And we just, I said, let's go right into the interview. And I explained to them as well. I say, when I put it up here, um, I said, I'm going to introduce you. The two of us are going to be looking at the camera. But after the introduction, I'm going to ask you the questions. We're both going to sit beside each other. And this is just going to be a conversation between the two of us. That's all it is. And then we'll mm -hmm. look back at the camera and we'll uh, close it off. And uh, works really well. Um, they are always super excited and uh, happy at the end as well. I think it's important at the end, I, when I turn it off, no matter how it goes, which they've all gone fairly well, is I shake their hand and say, wow, you did a phenomenal job. You did a great job. Thank you very much. And people are going to love it. So that's kind of the process that I go through during the interview. Yeah. So, How do you think about what to ask? Like the, 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 the themes of the questions that you want to ask these business owners? You know, at this point, I've just kept it simple. You guys gave me the question to ask, and that's just what I'm following. Um, okay. I haven't really deviated from that, but uh, uh, I'm thinking that maybe I should because all the videos have got the same theme all the time. Uh, yeah. People looking at them will catch up on that or not. But uh, uh, that's what I do. Um, um, you guys gave me the top five questions to ask, and that's just what I'm following. 
um, they're easy, they're personal, mm -hmm. um, well, sort of personal, but I mean, they're, they're not techy and they're not hard for um, any interviewee to know what the answer is going to be yeah. so, and how to answer them. So I've just stuck right to that, Grant. Now, what about who to interview? How do you think about who you want to interview? Um, that's a good question. And I, I look at uh, people that are, uh, will be in Avondale, doing business in Avondale, sorting um, or, or have some support or something from there. Um, the business itself doesn't really, I don't put a lot of thought into that because, um, you know, they're, they're all businesses. They're all operating there. And uh, they all want to grow market share, so I just I just go to them, and uh, it doesn't matter who they are. I interviewed uh, a uh, uh, auto repair shop yesterday, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, what was the other one I did yesterday? I have to think about it. Oh, um, a restaurant owner uh, that's expanding. So um, I I don't look at who the top companies are. I just look at um, I believe that I can add value to their business and, and uh, give them more exposure and they'll gain more market share. So I've cool. done uh, um, pet grooming companies. I've done, uh, um, what do you call it, um, where they do massages and spas and that sort of thing. I've interviewed those. They're, I mean, they're all great companies. Mm -hmm. And um, so anyone, any of them that uh, shows up in that area and that, uh, that's in there, I'm, I'm interviewing them. So. Now you have some magic questions that you ask um, that opens up, you know, uh, an opportunity to maybe talk about real estate or learn where they are in terms of buying and selling and if and when they're moving and where they want to move and all that stuff. Um, what are your, your magic questions um, and when do you say it? Do you say it during the interview, after the interview and a follow up? What's your process there? That's a great question. And, and here is again, I go back to what I said in the beginning, build relationships first, do business second. So mm -hmm. when I get together with them, it is all about them and their company. And here's what I'm here to do as the interview so that we can get this up on our, up on our park bench website. Um, right at the very end, the video is off and um, we're just wrapping up. I say, then I introduce myself, they already know I'm a realtor. They already know I work for Realty One Group. They already know that. So I, I say to them, so you know, I work for Realty One Group um, and uh, I build a business on repeat and referral. That's what I say sometimes. You come across anybody that's going to buy or sell, you let me know. Uh, and I'll, as I will uh, refer people to you as well. Sometimes I'll do it more coldly. More often than not, this is the way I'll do it, is I ask them, where do you live? Where, what part do you, do you live around here? And uh, they tell me, oh, how long have you lived there? Oh, we've been here for five years. Wow, five years. You must love it. Yeah, we do love our area. And then I ask them, well, where are you moving to next? Well, do you know what? My wife and I are talking about we want to move over here. And so that's opened up the discussion. And, yeah. and I find that every time I ask somebody the question, where are you going to move to next? Almost everybody can answer that question. Down mm -hmm. deep in their mind, they do have some thought. And now we bring it back up in the top. Yeah. And then, or at least it gets them thinking about it, even yeah. if they're five uh, far off. I mean, I know if you asked uh, my parents that question, they'd be like, well, you we haven't really figured that out yet, but we're, we're actually like trying to figure out where, to, and then it's like, great. Well, let me help you figure it out and figure yeah. out timelines, all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that. When I, yeah. When I first got into real estate and that's what I learned too. Um, uh, my broker told me, call your center of influence tell them what you're doing, go and practice your listing presentation with them. That's an mm -hmm. opportunity to practice. And I said, okay, well, that's great. I don't like doing that, but I, yeah, I'm going to do it. Uh, because you tell me it's going to work. So mm -hmm. I called up, the, he's a friend of mine. And Gary, uh, I said, here's what I am, what I'm doing now. And I said, uh, um, if you come across someone who's going to buy or sell, would you refer me? He said, oh, of course I would. I said, if you're going to refer me, I said, why don't I come by and show you how I actually operate my real estate business. And then that way you'll know what you are referring. And he said, well, that's great. But he said, I'm telling you right now, we're not moving. We're not selling. We have no plans. I said, oh, no, 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 Gary, farthest from the truth. I said, I'm just, all I want to do is just show you. If, I'm not going to try and get you to sell your house or do anything. Okay, great. Within 60 days, they listed, I double ended their house and I sold them another house. 
So <laughs> <laughs> it's true because once people start thinking about it, they start realizing yeah. what they can get for, they start realizing where they can move to, what they can get, yeah. then the vision starts making people want to take action, right? Exactly. No, no action is because of no vision. So if you give yeah. people a vision, then they might want to start taking action. Yeah. That's yeah, awesome. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Cause I hope everyone's listening like that. Where do you live? And it's Jake, right. you, ju you met them, you've interviewed them. It's like, hey, so wh what part of town do you live do you in? Live? How long have you been there? And where do you want to move next? It's a, everyone moves. This is a question of when and with who and where. Yeah. Um, so those are really great questions. Good job. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Um, talk to me about like, so some agents, they're like, oh, well, why, why can't I just go interview people on my own and put them on my Facebook or YouTube? Like, why do I need Park Bench? When you think about, the, the overall big picture value that we're providing from a platform perspective, technology perspective, service support, training, all that stuff. Um, what is the stuff that you appreciate and valued the most? Well, that's a great question because um, I remember back a number of years ago, I believed in, in, um, in building a book of business with business owners and building relationships with business owners. And I've tried this a couple of times over the years in my career in real estate. Um, it's extremely complex. Mm. It sounds easy just to go in and uh, um, introduce myself, meet them, and put it on YouTube, put it on Facebook, that kind of stuff. Um, but this, the site and what you have uh, and what you offer to us is extremely expensive to build. It's extremely complicated to uh, maintain it on a daily basis and really keep it up. But when I looked at it, I didn't have the structure the systems to really do it. And I tried to do it a couple of times and I didn't really have the success because of the time it takes. Um, mm. Yeah. And uh, sure, I could go and take the videos and put them on YouTube, put them on Facebook. I could do that. But this is really adding, uh, it's almost like a BNI group on the internet, if you will, because the business owners, they all get to know one another on there. Mm -hmm. And um, I can, I can see having just a, uh, 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 parkbench.com slash Avondale uh, networking session get together someday person, person mm -hmm. to person so everybody can meet everybody. So mm -hmm. it, it's, there's really no comparison to what you can do yourself for the little bit of money. Well, I shouldn't say this grant for you a lot of money you charge us. I don't want you to think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's not a cheap yeah. thing, but the, it's I think it's cheap. because the, the platform and the service to execute it, if, if the concept is worthwhile doing, yeah. there's a lot of components to execute it properly. And that's why exactly. the, the expense is there. Um, but yeah, uh, I see that. Yeah. It, it's, yeah, but it's, but I mean, the, the system that is there, and it's not just, a, I mean, yes, you've got the system, you've got the platform, you have parkbench.com, but you have all of the back end support, um, mm -hmm. you know, with, the, with uh, your CS team and everything else, and that's there to help me. And, um, it, it's just, there is just no comparison. There's just no comparison. I mean, and, and for what we do pay for it, uh, and the support that we get and the revenue it's going to generate for me, it, it's just not even worth talking about. Yeah. So, you know, uh, it's funny to bring up the BNI thing. That was uh, one of the things I hated going to those morning meetings. Uh, <laughs> yeah. and, and that was one of the genesis for this idea was I want to get to know all the business owners, not just one per category. Right. And I don't just want to meet with them once a week, I want to like give them something that they can engage with and use and, and, and stuff like that. And so uh, it's funny you make that connection. Uh, the vision is that agents are able to actually now start to build, you know, these have their own meetings with the people who are on the website, then they can engage in the website when they're not in the meeting and keep talking with each other and really take that concept, which is totally great. The BNI concept is great, um, but let's just kind of modernize it um, yeah. and, and put it on steroids. 100%. Um, for some agents thinking about this, but also even some agents who got going, they, they talk about like, Oh, I don't, I feel like I don't have the time to do this. Yeah. Um, and that's a belief. It's a thought. It's, sure. it's real for that person. Uh, what would you say to that person who is like, I don't know if I have the time to do this. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a, that's a big point is is you just have to time block it that's all you need to do you see the value um i don't have a lot of business right now because i'm coming back in and gaining traction again so i can put a lot of time into this but i can see uh in another four to six weeks eight weeks 
I'm going to have less time to go out and do that because I'm going to be seeing a lot more clients, but I'm still going to time block when I'm going to send my emails out and when I'm going to do my interviews. I'm, and, and that's the key to it. If you time block it into an appointment, just like you would any other appointment, um, I mean, you'll, you'll still get it done and you are going to gain more business. There's no question about it. You will gain more business. And, and if you're, uh, if you're not time blocking today, you should be time blocking. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, now, you know, and I've always said in real estate, this business will run you or you will run it. And um, so, and I prefer to run my real estate business, not allow it to run me. And uh, if I got everything time blocked and uh, these are my appointments and this is what I'm doing at all of these times throughout the day, through the week, then it becomes very simple and it's a well-oiled machine when it's operating. So when I follow it now, the whole thing about time blocking, just to touch on that is, is you can't time block and have your calendar hundred percent full or you're not going to follow it a hundred percent of the time. If you hit 70%, you've had a really good week. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because things are going to happen and you're going to have to readjust and then just keep moving on. So, but I would say if you aim for nothing, you're sure to get it, like get it blocked yeah. in there. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, follow it. Yeah. Yeah. So let's, let's finish with, um, what are you most excited about now that you have this in your toolbox, you know, you have this thing, uh, for your brand and for your business, for your community, uh, what's what's most exciting uh, when you think about the future of your career in the business? Really going into a new area. Um, uh, most exciting for me is I'm able to get in there very quick, build a lot of relationships quickly and gain a lot of business and gain traction. Like I see great stuff for 2020 for me and my business and my business growth. It's uh, I just have to follow this simple uh, pattern that I've laid out here. So that's what I'm most excited about is building those relationships and good relationships, good quality relationships mm. and, um, and adding value to them. And it's going to come back to me tenfold. That's what I'm most excited about. Well, I'm excited to see your future results. You've already done very well. I know we didn't talk about the numbers because sometimes it's kind of like a faux pas and stuff like that. Right. But Arnold's done really well um, very quickly. And I think it's because you put in the work, you block the time, you have a system, you follow the process. And if you do certain things in a certain way, you get a certain result. Um, exactly. that was, that was the whole purpose of why we put this together was to help agents have that structure and to have some fun because it's fun yeah. to get out in your community and be a local leader and Absolutely. maybe be more than a realtor. And I think now in, in the industry that it, mm-hmm. real estate is becoming, I think it's important that realtors try to be more than just a realtor, uh, and, yeah. and be a leader for their community. Yeah. hundred percent. Well, thanks, Arnold. And I hope everyone learned something from this. Um, And if you have questions about Arnold, we'll put some notes so you can uh, ask him some questions so that you can be successful in real estate. Thanks very much, Arnold. Thanks, Grant. I know.